Hi, welcome back. Today I want to do a tutorial on how to work with film negatives. Specifically, I shot with Kodak Portra 400 on a recent photo shoot, and I want to just show how you can bring your negative to a positive and have it look good inside of art, which I'll explain the film negative tool inside of art and what it is different from the raw therapy version. And then I will also show how to use Negadoctor inside of Darktable with a film scan captured from my EOS R converted to a DNG file so that Darktable could open it. And we're gonna compare what I get on the computer to the scans from the lab. Now here inside of Art, which is a fork of raw therapy, this is what I came up with, with just some quick running through, getting the image looking the way I wanted. So I'm gonna go to File Browser. I'm gonna go to one of the other scans. This is scanned on just a, a cheap $80 light table, which is not actually that great, using my EOS R and the 100 millimeter f2.8 macro lens. Let's see, looks like I had it at f8 at 20th of a second. ISO 400. Now, ART is reading the native CR3 file. So if you're in raw therapy, you would go over to this raw tab to find the film negative tool. But inside of ART, it's under this magic wand special effects and it's film negative. Now, the difference between film negative and ART and film negative in raw therapy. Raw therapy does not have this film base RGB to pick the base color of the film negative. It still has this upper portion, however. Turn this on, it is gonna invert the image. Now, you can play with these sliders if you would like, but I'm gonna select some neutral spots. So you pick this neutral spot and you wanna select patches that differ in brightness but have no color. Her dress is black, this back here is actually white. Well, it's also could be kind of a neutral gray because it's not a pure white object in the background. So I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna select this here and then the black of the dress. As you can see, it adjusted the color slightly. Now, if you're in raw therapy, this specifically tells you to set your white balance afterwards. So if you're in raw therapy, you would actually go over to your white balance and I would select pick. You can actually pick non-exposed area of the film negative or a neutral object in the scene. But I'm actually going to do this film base. So I'm gonna pick the base color of the film, which actually helps when you're converting film, actually. This is something that you use in a dark tables Negadoctor because it wants the base color of the film. So I'm gonna select this and just select a non-exposed area of the film down here where there was no exposure done. That will get the actual color of the film. Now you can turn this up to bring the image's brightness up if you would like. So actually, I'll go ahead and uh, turn that up. But first, I think I wanna go here, pick my white balance. Now sometimes I get good results selecting the unexposed area or selecting black but I just selected an unexposed area of the film. Go back to my arrow so I don't ac accidentally select another area. Something I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna bring the exposure of the image up by two stops. You know, now you can go higher with this and I like to actually go down and do a tone curve. But first I wanna actually show, since I selected the white balance already, I'm gonna go back into here and turn this reference exponent, which is contrast. But you can bump this up. I'm just gonna do two, then go back into exposure and just bring the exposure up some. Now that did allow me to get some contrast into the image, as you can see here. Now the film does look fairly good. This image is slightly out of focus because of shooting it on a light table, the film was not 100% flat. As stated, you know, you can go in and choose different areas for your white balance if you want kind of more of a neutral kind of look. You can cool the image 
something I'm going to do. Go into my normal thing. I'm going to add a tone curve. I'm actually going to set this to film like. I'm just right here. I'm going to add some contrast in and bring that up. Now obviously you can go in, fine tune this, but I'm going to bring up the lab scan. This is the lab scan. It's actually only about 2K resolution, but it is a TIFF. Now they have obviously done corrections. I can bring this image closer to this just by doing some more further editing. But if I go to the one that I spent a little more time on, still does not match. But if I go through, mess with the white balance and really fine tune the image, I can match this. But sometimes I think when you're using these tools, you are removing the character of the film. Now, obviously, when they scanned in this image, they used a tool that goes over the image with an infrared light to remove dust and any imperfections. But here, obviously, just took a photo of the film negative with my EOS R. You can see little areas in the film. If you're using like an Epson V600 or a V800 and you're using view scan, which does work on Linux, uh, it has an infrared mode that will remove that stuff also, but it can also turn your image into a positive right from the get go in the program before you even bring it over into your raw editor. Plus view scan will let you convert your film negative into a DNG so it is a raw file. But now I'm going to bring up dark table and I'm going to show you the process on a different image. Okay. Now we're here in dark table and I have a different raw file open that I did scan also with my EOS R. This is how the film negative looks on import. And this is what I got using Nega Doctor and a few other options inside of Darktable. Looks really good. Here's the lab scan. I actually prefer the color I got, even though it has got a lot of green in the image. I'm working in Darktable to correct a little more. Now this green kind of tint, that's partly from the film, actually. But I'm going to get rid of that. Reset that and I'm going to go back to the default image. Negadoctor, as long as you have all of your options enabled in here, Negadoctor will be inside your basic group. It's right here. So in here, I just turn it on, creates a positive, but it wants the color of the base film. So you turn this on and select an area of the film negative that has not been exposed to get the color of the film itself. Now in this dynamic range, this D max, it says maximizing density of the film corresponding to white after inversion. This value depends on film specifications, the developing process, the dynamic range of the scene, and the scanner exposure settings. Now this film I know for a fact was developed using the C41 chemicals, more than likely from Cinestill. It's just something that was on the documentation when I picked up the scans and the film negatives. It said C41 process, so, and I know that uh, you can get that from Cinestill. Here, you can just actually select an area of white in the film to bring that up, or you can adjust it yourself. This scan exposure bias, you know, it says correct the exposure of the scanner for all RGB channels before the inversion. So blacks are neither clipped or too pale. Now, if you move this around, obviously, you can brighten the image or darken it. You're correcting the exposure from the scanner. I'm honestly just going to bring it to about there. That looks good to me. Then I'm going to go into corrections shadow color cast. So if there's a color cast in the shadows, like a, you can do a selection from here in the hair, but usually you want to find actual shadow and then you highlight white balance, which you can manually adjust again, but you want to select a white area. Now this would help if you take one shot of a color checker passport, then you can do those corrections in that lighting, but then you're wasting one of your exposures on your film negative by doing that. But it would give you more accurate of a result. So I'm just going to select a shadow area here in the hair, and it detected a little bit of yellow. 
and I'm gonna select over here in the highlight, it detected some blue. From this point on, you have your print options, which I honestly don't mess with, you know, virtual paper properties. I prefer since I work all in digital anyways, I don't mess with this at all. I just leave it. So from here, I'll actually minimize Negadoctor and then I'll open white balance. Now from in this point, I will actually just fine tune my white balance to where I want it. Something I notice in Darktable, where you normally go left to cool the image down is actually going to warm it up. So you actually got to go up where you would normally be warming the image to cool it down. I kind of like cooler tones in my images, but I'm just bringing this up a little bit to about there. And then I'm going to zoom in to see if there's any magenta in there. And I'm just going to tune the image a little bit to where I like it and then go back out and then bring this back down to more of a acceptable area. Possibly, eh, let's see, bring that down just a bit more. Now the white balance on the light on the light table I was using is supposed to be 5000 Kelvin and I did set that in the camera. Um, I don't believe it's truly producing 5000 Kelvin, but there's that. And honestly, you just kinda can go through mess with the image a little bit more. Sometimes I like to see how some presets in Darktable act with the film negative. You know, I kind of like that there. And here's the lab scan. As you can see, there's a lot of red in the skin tones. That is something that does happen with Kodak Portra 400, is it does kind of turn stuff red. I do recommend going to Rawpedia and downloading the uh, Hald Sealut film presets to apply a Kodak film preset to this. Now, one thing I do want to say is if you're using a, like an Epson V600, like I'm going to eventually invest in, and purchase the professional version of ViewScan, you can actually set it to essentially simulate one of the more well-known scanners, film scanners, to not alter the color of your film negative, but you can also specify Kodak and different things in it and then save it as a DNG, which at that point, Darktable and any other piece of software will open. But I'm actually going to go back here and even with blindly just kind of following that, I still kind of matched the color in other images I went through and corrected. Uh, these film tools inside a dark table are very nice. I am going to be possibly shooting more film after investing in a better camera with better autofocus. This was actually shot with my 70 to 200 IS version 2 lens EF mount, and it turned out to get a sharper image than the 50 millimeter art. The art lens was actually back focusing. I haven't had to deal with lenses front focusing or back focusing in a long time because when you're using a mirrorless camera, you're focusing off of the sensor and those issues with the lenses kind of just disappear when you're shooting mirrorless because you're focusing off of the sensor and not off of a mirror. But obviously with a film camera, you can't calibrate your lens to the camera. It just isn't possible. Hopefully this helped. Anybody out there that is possibly wanting to mess with film, I just wanted to show what I've done thus far using shooting my first two rolls of film ever. Portra 400, you know, I purchased it because it is a professional film and just kind of wanted to see what all the hype was about regarding the color. The color is very good and I do actually prefer the result from Darktable. I can get this result out of art and raw therapy. It just takes a little bit more time. If you want to see any future videos, there is a bind behind the scenes coming of this photo shoot. There will probably be broke up into multiple videos where I will actually be showing the film scans from the lab and not these ones uh, because I'm not going to be scanning the negatives in with my mirrorless camera because I don't have everything I need to keep the film negative completely flat. And with the light tables, color being kind of inconsistent, 
I'll be doing more film stuff once I have an Epson Perfection V600 or a V800 film scanner, which both do work under Linux, and I purchased the ViewScan Professional to run under Linux, and then I'll be doing more in-depth film, but I'll also have a better film camera by then. If you have any questions, comments, uh, maybe you have a little more experience processing film inside of the open source software, uh, leave your input below. It'll be greatly appreciated. Like, subscribe, comment below, and share the video. And I will see you in the next video and look forward for the behind the scenes videos from this photo shoot. Thank you and bye.